subjects that she wants to talk on. But we're going to go ahead and get started. I wanted to focus a lot of this Zoom on, um, I guess, just building your team and leadership. Because at the end of the day, that's what everything falls down to. And um, yes, you want to be a good leader for your downline and you want to hope that your sponsor is just you know, as good of a leader as you are, but that's not always the case. And I want to touch base on one thing. So the, even if you have, say you join someone and they're in it for a little while and they quit or you guys don't really talk or whatever it may be, like you always have to remember that your leader has nothing to do with your business. This is your business. There's Look at Jade Hooper, for example. She's an ambassador diamond. She's in the top 10 income earners of the company, and she didn't have a sponsor. She pretty much joined, and then her sponsor quit like the next week. So she literally had to figure this out on her own, and she got, her way, her, she got herself all the way to ambassador. So yes, it's good to have a leader who's in this with you, but at the end of the day, it doesn't define your success and it doesn't define your own business. This is your business 100%. And as independent distributors, we kind of have to take responsibility for our own business. Um, the hardest thing about being a leader and the hardest thing you guys are going to go through is trying to develop other leaders. And I, I took a couple notes from a few of the books that I'm reading and just stuff that I've learned like over the past three years that has to do with leadership and the hardest thing that you're going to do is try to build other leaders, leaders that you can count on to run their own team and leaders that you can count on to like get stuff done that needs to be done. So if they join or if they sign a new distributor, like you want to get to a point where you know, like, yes, Daniela just enrolled a new distributor. Like I already know that they're going to know what the steps to success are. They're going to know where they can find their training videos. They're going to know what they need to do. They're going to know about their authorship. They're going to know about this, that, and the other. And at the end of the day, if they don't implement the stuff that she's showing them, that's obviously on them. It has nothing to do with Daniela, but it's such an amazing feeling when you start to get those leaders that rise up to the top and that you know that they're getting their stuff done and that they know what they're supposed to be doing and what they're supposed to be teaching people. That is literally the number one thing. I remember Joel and Stephanie Dunn said that you should work, signing a distributor should be your full-time job and getting loyal customers should be your part-time job. So once you start enrolling distributors, you have, you're a leader, whether you want to be or not like I fell into this position I had no intention whatsoever of having or like wanting to even lead a bunch of people but at the end of the day that's what this business is about and if you're not growing your leadership goal or your leadership knowledge and your just knowing the stuff that you have to get done and the stuff that you have to teach people in order for them to be pretty much in the spot that you're at, you're never, your business won't grow. Your business will only grow as much as you are growing, if that makes sense. So, in one of the books I was reading, there was a, like a little snippet that made so much sense to me. And it said, your leadership ability determines your level of effectiveness. If your leadership score is a four out of a 10, then your effectiveness will be a four out of a 10 and it will never be higher than a four. Not to mention, you will never attract or keep any other leaders better than a three. And that was like eye-opening to me because at the end of the day, you hear so many people say like, I want to find a runner. I want to find a runner. I want to find someone who's going to join this business and just blow the lid off of this. But if you are not that person for your own business, you're never going to attract anyone who, who would do that, who would jump in and be that runner. It's going to be very, very, very hard because who you are is what you attract. So if you are, you know, expanding your knowledge on leadership, on self-development, like you're going to attract those people who are pretty much geared to do the same thing. That's all it comes down to. So if you're not, and I don't want to say like you have to read all the leadership books out there, but if you, but you need to like expand your knowledge on this stuff and you have to get comfortable with being a leader. And the only way that I found like that kind of like made my self esteem go up and kind of like gave me the knowledge that I needed to be able to grow the team that I wanted to grow was reading leadership books. And that's kind of like where it comes down to like 
how this said, like if you're a level four, you're only going to attract a level three and lower. If you want to attract runners and you want to make this business easier for you, you have to grow yourself. You have to, have to, have to work on personal development. You have to work on your leadership skills because at the end of the day, if that, if you're trying to attract a bunch of people, when you have these people, when they join and become distributors, how are you going to lead them? How are you going to get them to diamond so you can go double? Or how are you going to get them to double so you can go triple or whatever it may be? It takes leadership and it takes stepping up to the plate and it takes making this stuff happen. You have to make sure that you are leading your team. If you can go a whole entire week without talking to people on your downline, chances are they're going to be doing the same exact thing. So they're going to enroll someone and they're only going to check in with them maybe once a week, once a month, once a month, whatever that may be. And that's when people start to quit because they don't have that. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not push, but they don't have that constant reminder of what they should be doing. And even if you don't have a sponsor, like I've said this so many times, you can message me. I've helped so many people who their sponsor quit or who they don't get along with their sponsor, whatever it may be. Like I will take you under my wing and I will be there for you 100%. You just have to let me know and you have to let your sponsor know. You have to let whoever it is that you're talking to know that you, you want this help, that you need this help. I'm never, I will never know what you need until you tell me. That's also what we have like our lifers page for even your sideline, your downline, your upline it doesn't have to be your direct upline. You can just make friends or, you know, talk to somebody and like kind of have a, an accountability partner, you know, to kind of just say, Hey, you know, I really want to do this. Let's kind of push each other and just go from there. Um, as far as I wanted to say something about how you said, you know, once you have a team, you're a leader, I feel that once you're a distributor, you're a leader and you need to start leading by example. That way you're already setting an expectation for those people who do decide to join your team that this is what I do. I do share every day. I do talk to my team every day. I do jump on a team call every day. And like that way, it's like they're expecting to do the same exact thing, but you have to be consistent about it. So I feel like as far as like being a leader, that's, that's what you are as soon as you get a distributor kit. For sure. And you have, just like Daniela said, like you have to, obviously if people join my business, for the most part, they know what I do like in front of the camera per se. Like, you know that I post every single day, you know that I talk about products, you know that I talk about my personal life, you know that I talk about this business. Like that's what I do every single day. So I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, percent of the time people know coming into the business that that's what they're going to have to do because that's how I grew my business. How are you going to decide to grow your business? You could do it on social media like I did and like Daniela did and like Sammy did and like so many of us other people did. Or if you don't, like I always message people if they're not posting or if they haven't posted in a couple days, I'm like, okay, what are you doing? Like you haven't posted on Facebook. So are you blitzing people every single day? Like what is it that you're doing to grow this business? Cause you have to be doing something just like a coffee shop. They have that giant open sign on their door every single day. If you're not posting, if you're not talking to people, that sign is gone. People aren't going to see it. People aren't going to think that you're doing this business. They're going to think that you quit already or whatever it may be. I can't tell you how many people, how many times people have messaged me saying, Oh, my cousin does it or my old friend from high school does it, but they don't do it often. So I don't know if they're taking it seriously or not. And that's why they end up joining with me as opposed to someone else. You want, you want to be that person. You want to be that person that people take seriously. You want to be that person that people want to join because you take this so seriously and because you're so passionate and because you're so proactive and consistent with your business. Um, let's see. At the end of the day, if what you're doing right this second isn't working. So if what you're doing right now isn't growing your loyal customer um, base, your potential distributor base, whatever it may be. And I'm not, I don't mean that as you're signing people left and right. I mean that as are people messaging you? Are you talking to people? Are people responding to your posts? Are they liking your pictures? Stuff like that. Like if you're posting something and it's only getting like a couple likes and every single one of those likes is from distributors, chances are you're going to have to do something to get outsiders in if that makes sense. So that means like expanding your network. That means interacting with people on social media, not just posting stuff. It kind of takes a little bit more than just posting. I want to say posting is 
has a lot to do with it, but there's a difference between posting on Facebook intentionally and like robot posting, if that makes sense. So I have, I, for example, I have one distributor. Um, she posts literally every single day, every single day, but she doesn't get anything from it. And she, she's probably not on this call, but she doesn't get anything from it. And it's because they're literally just ad posts. And I've had multiple conversations with her about this, but at the end of the day, if someone doesn't want to get real and get personal on a post, it's going to be hard for the people who are struggling with money to even want to join them because they don't even know what their situation is, or they don't even know like their growth because they don't share anything. The only thing they share is like sales ads, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. You need to be relatable. Like what you're doing needs to be relatable. I get that. Um, sometimes it, and I'm just saying this because, you know, I'm from experience. Sometimes it's embarrassing to want to share your story. You don't want people to know you're struggling. You know, Facebook kind of is like a mask to a, to a lifestyle that you live or don't live. And um, for you to put it out there that, you took this money, Lisa, from your grocery money and you didn't know if you were going to have food in the fridge that week because of it. That's something that you probably don't want to put out there, but you're not the only person out there with that struggle. You have to be relatable. Like my sister, for example, she just posted, I don't know if it was yesterday or today, a huge box of diapers. And she said one wrap a sell of one wrap for $25 bought her that big box of diapers. And I know that if you have babies buying a box of diapers is all the time is, is can get expensive. So something like that is relatable. So you want your posts to be relatable. People have to relate. Like they're not going to relate to you just posting an ad every day. You know, they're not going to be like, Oh, you know, I don't really want to do that. But if you're posting like, this is how it's changing my life. This is how it's helping me. Like, it's not just about our products. It's about a life changing experience. Like that's relatable. For sure. And uh, like, just like you said, like no one wants to share like their struggles. Like it's embarrassing, especially like, you know, that's pretty much how I felt. I was 26 years old, like still having to live this struggle that you think that you're only going to live like in your early, early twenties or your late, late teens. Like, and I was still living it and I was 26 years old. Like that. I don't want to share that. I didn't want to put that out there because it is embarrassing. You know what I mean? But it was sharing those stories and sharing those hardships. I think that's what people relate to and they realize that they aren't the only ones and not only are they not the only ones struggling, but I'm not the only one that can join this business and make some money. It's not just me. It's not just Daniela. It's not just all these other leaders that we have on this call. It's literally anybody that wants to do it. And I feel like they see like, okay, well she, she wasn't always like, her life wasn't always like great and her financial situation wasn't always the best, but she turned it around and she made it happen. And I feel like people can relate to that. And it's those stories like, you know, from when you're at your lowest of low and then they see like where you're at now, like that's what people want to see. They want to see that. They want to see you be real. They want to see you be vulnerable. That's what people are going to be attracted to. And that's, what's going to get them to join your team. Oh, uh, let's see what else. I know I don't think that you've mentioned I know since we're kind of like on the topic about how you're sharing your um some you know relatable on Facebook did you did we bring up um the copy and paste did we bring that up already that's on your piece of paper okay I I mean since we're kind of like on that topic I guess I can just talk about it real quick um I have Carly right here so if she if she says anything don't mind me so um I wanted to bring this up just because I've been seeing this. I feel more and more and more like every single day. Um, so before the copy and paste option was available, I remember I used to always get, you know, distributors and say, Oh my God, I love what you shared. Do you mind if I share it? And their only option was to literally remember it and write it out or, you know, and sometimes they reworded it that way. But now the copy and paste option is so convenient because you literally just copy and paste. Um, personally, I think that 
it is getting, sorry. Um, I think that it's getting unoriginal now. Like, um, and I don't want to say this like in any negative way. Like, this is just constructive criticism. Um, I feel like um, you need to be original. It has to come from you. If your post is more than 10% copy and paste, then you're doing it wrong. Because at that point, you it's lazy, I think. I feel like it, it's not coming from anywhere. Like all you're doing is copy and pasting just to get it out of the way. If you're not really sharing anything about how you feel about the business or what it's doing for you personally, oh, sorry, um, then it's not, she's like gonna fall into the table. <laughs> Um, then it's not gonna, no. it's not going to be effective in your business and it's going to show because I I've seen some distributors where they're entire, everything that they post about the business is copy and paste down to what people are posting personally to where they just change their name at the end. And it's like, or they just change their kids' names. And it's like, I don't think that's your story. Actually. I am actually pretty sure that's not your story at all. <laughs> you know? So I feel like that's. That I feel like the copy and paste is kind of becoming a problem and not just, I mean, you can, we're, our posts are here for inspiration. If I post something about a before and after and you think it's great, then, you know, feel free to copy and paste that. But it's, it doesn't hurt to change some of the wording to make it your own. Um, I feel like if people know you on Facebook, especially like your friends and family, if they know you personally and you copied something word for word and like, that's not even how she talks. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like people can relate to that. It kind of looks more robotic that way. So I feel like it, we all need to like kind of dig deep and come up with some original content. Like it should be 10% copy and paste, 80% original. For sure. And we were just talking That's about what I think. What do you think, Lisa? Yeah. Well, we, me and Danielle were just Wait, talking. Wait, I can't hear you. Time. You can hear me? What's going on? Can everyone else hear me? Sammy, can you hear me? Sammy, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Sorry, my computer is broken, so it's like. I just, uh, I was like looking straight at your face, so I figured I'd ask you. I think it might be Daniela's, but you can hear me, right? So I think I'm good. I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so me and Daniela were talking about this last night, actually, and I love copy paste. Like, it, it's easy at the end of the day, but it should not be the only reason why you post, like just because it's so easy to copy and paste something. I'm so guilty of copying and pasting, but when it comes to your business posts, they should be personal. You have to dig deep. When I, like, say I ask you tonight, I want everyone to post a personal post tonight, not a copy and paste one. Dig deep. Think about why you joined this business. Why are you going to fight so hard to get the promotion that you're wanting to get? Dig deep, whether it takes you looking at your kids and just thinking of what it is that you want to say, those personal posts are going to be what grows your business 100% more than a copy and paste post. Copy and paste posts, just like Daniela said, our posts are here for inspiration. So if you love something that I said, you can more than reword it, tweak it, make it your own, whatever it may be that's fine. Like the Pokemon post that I made last night, I literally, it was like one 30 in the morning and Luis was watching videos on that. And I was like, you know what? I thought of a good post. And I got a few messages like, can I copy and paste that? I'm like, that's perfectly fine. When it comes to business posts, like, you know, the posts I'm talking about, like the long ones where you kind of go into detail about why you did this business and what it's done for you so far and why you're so excited to be a part of something like this. Those posts you want to make personal. You want to be able to tell your story. You want, even if it's even if you think that it's not like a big story or um, you know that you've accomplished a lot so far. Everyone starts from the beginning. Everyone starts with the business kit. Everyone starts at that distributor level with not a single loyal customer and not a single distributor. Everyone does, and we work our way from that. So just like when Daniela started, she couldn't sit there and say that she was a double diamond and that she did, she accomplished this, this, and that, and earned this much in good bonuses. Neither could I, neither could Sammy, neither could any of us. You know what I mean? We all start at the same 
spa. We all do. And when me and Daniela joined, we didn't have the copy and paste option on Facebook. You literally had to read it and hope you remember it. But I think that that also made it easier for us to make it more original because we only, well, if you're like me and you can't remember anything to save your life, like I would only remember key points of it and the points that I really liked and the points that I really wanted to touch on. And the rest of it would be 100% for me because I couldn't remember the rest of it. You don't want to not, you don't want to seem like a robot pretty much. You want to be real and you want to be genuine. And I know that it's hard for a lot of people, especially when they first join to get raw and to get real with Facebook because it is embarrassing. Like if you're coming from like a situation that I came from or a situation like Daniela came from where she literally worked 60 hours a week and still you know, didn't have enough money to do the thing, to live the life that she wanted to live, yet she was overworked to the bone. Like, no one wants to share that. I know I didn't want to share that, especially with all of the people on Facebook that I had at the time. Like, it's embarrassing. And I, I didn't want, hold on, there's another question. Real quick about, um, just before I forget, um, I had a distributor, right? And she, she currently is a distributor. I don't believe she's on this call right now, but, um, she always copies and pastes and she, she's, she copies and pastes a lot of the posts that not, not my post specifically, but just anybody's posts, like any leader talking about making thousands and thousands of dollars a month. And that stuff is all great if that's really your position. Um, but she messaged me one day and she's like, Hey, this customer messaged me about the post I just shared. And I don't know what to say because I'm a, I'm only a Ruby and I'm thinking, well, why would you say that you're making thousands and thousands of dollars a month? That's awkward. You know, it's an awkward position to put yourself in. If you can't even respond to somebody on what to say, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I just feel like, like, don't, don't why? hype yourself up if it's not there yet. Like own what you are because there's people whether it's whether you're just a distributor rank, which is a which, which is still great because you finally came up with the ninety nine dollars to join the business. There's people that want to be distributors, so you just saying I'm a brand new distributor and I'm going after a five hundred dollar Ruby bonus and I want to help friends do it too. Who wants to join me? That in itself is huge. And there's people that aren't distributors that want to be distributors. If you're an executive. There's brand new distributors who want to be executive. So. Claim your rank, own it, and go from there. You don't have to like jump the gun and automatically say you're making hundreds and hundreds of dollars. That's not because it's not realistic, and some people will know that. Yeah, you and you don't, the don't ever feel like you have to lie, Daniela. She swiped that ball and then dipped I out. Saw it. <laughs> um, don't ever feel like you have to lie. You don't have to lie about what you're making. You have to realize that there were weeks where I wish I had $25 and you just made $25 by selling a wrap that you had in your purse. Like you don't have to lie about that stuff. Share that stuff. That's what's going to get people to join 25 bucks, 50 bucks. I joined to make $200 extra. And I, that's why I joined. Yeah. I had that timeline in 12 months. So it wasn't even in my first month. I was like, okay, if I can get, if I do this for a whole year and I can get to a point where I can make $200 extra a month, I'll be perfectly. Happy. Like, that's what most people want. Share that stuff. Don't ever feel like you have to lie about something because you don't at all. And that's why I joined. Remember Lisa? I remember I, I, you were always on Instagram and I was like, why is she always posting about $25 here, $25 there? Please stop posting about wraps. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then I like slowly started asking you about it. And that's why I joined just for the cash part. Because at that point, I didn't know about promotions and bonuses yeah. and ranks. I was like, I just want some cash. For the first three months, I didn't even talk about that stuff. I didn't talk about promotions. I didn't talk about bonuses because I wasn't earning that stuff. And I was not promoting. I was talking about wrap cash because that's what I was making. And that's what got my first distributors in was rap cash. Even to date when I share about rap cash, that still gets people to message me and it's rap cash. It's rap cash. It's what you can do. It's what anyone on this call can do. It has nothing to do with your rank. It has nothing to do with how long you've been in the business. It just has to do with the fact that people would die for 25 bucks for 50 bucks extra a week. 
to hold them off until their next paycheck. Like that's a lot of money at the end of the day. There's <laughs> people that have asked me, Hey, do you have 20 bucks I can borrow? For sure. You know, and if that's, if someone ever asks you to borrow 20 bucks or spot them for lunch until payday, that's a perfect. And that's problem. like, you know, like people w could use 20 bucks for sure. I've been there too many times to count. Like I could tell you some stories of, some struggles that me and Luis went through before this business came into our life. Like it was not always easy. And even though like before this business, people might've thought that everything was great. People might've thought that we were doing good and everything was perfect, but that was so not the case. So not the case. So it's those little successes that you should be happy to share. That's why people join. There's so many people right now, right this second, just waiting for Friday until they get paid so they can go grocery shopping, so they can fill up their car with gas. I remember before this business alone, like being able to fill up our SUV with gas, like fill up the tank in, at one time was impossible. It never happened ever. I literally filled up our gas tank by like $10, $20 increments at a time. I was never able to fill up the whole entire thing because I knew we need money for this. We need money for that. We need money for this. We need money for that. And at the end of the, at the, end of the week, we're not going to have enough to buy the stuff that we need to buy the groceries or diapers or whatever it may be. If I fill up our SUV all the way to the top with gas, it's not going to happen. So even stuff like that, like it wasn't always easy for me to share, you know, stuff like that. It wasn't fun, but those are the posts that are going to get you, the distributors that you want on your team, the distributors that are willing to fight for that extra $25, that extra $50, willing to fight for that executive promotion because they know how much $200 a month would do for their family. Okay, I was reading, I was reading the things that Sammy answered. Um, what else would else succeed? Okay, I talked about posting from the heart versus personal posting. And just look at your Facebook. If more than 10% of it is copy and pasting stuff, then you got to dig a little deeper. You got to figure out why you're doing this business. Why are you working this business? Why should people join you? Why? What? has this business changed in your life that you feel like people should join you, that they should join you on this opportunity, that, sh that they should spend the $99 and give this a chance. Share that stuff. It doesn't have to be big. Don't ever feel like just because you're not a ruby or an emerald or a diamond that you can't attract potential distributors because how do you think I did it when I was a brand new distributor or when I was an executive? Like, how do you think I did it? I couldn't sit there and say that I was making thousands and thousands of dollars because I wasn't. Danielle couldn't sit there and say that she was making thousands and thousands of dollars when she first joined because she wasn't. There's nothing wrong with your story. So share that. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't ever feel like you need to be an ambassador diamond in order to attract distributors. Because how do you think that people got to ambassador diamond? It wasn't by telling people that they were an ambassador diamond and they were only an executive share any type of successes, share the way that this business makes you feel. It might not even be a money thing. It might be like a camaraderie thing where you didn't have, you know, especially for like stay at home moms, because I know literally how lonely it can get when you only have two babies to talk to all day long and your husband's gone at work. Like you can literally feel like you're losing your mind like losing your mind. I would go to my mom's house just so I could talk to someone else because I, I, it's not like I was working outside of the house. I didn't have anyone else to talk to. I had a Facebook, but I wasn't very active on Facebook before this. So just that like camaraderie and that being able to talk to people, being able to talk to people who are going through your same situation, being able to talk to people who were at the spot that you're at, but aren't anymore, like that type of stuff that alone is going to get people to join just because I know how lonely it is to be, to not have any, like, not, I don't want to say real friends because I had friends, but you know, they were wrapped up in their world. I was wrapped up in my world. Like someone to talk to that's going through the same exact thing that you're going, that you're going through and that you're fighting for. Like that is so important that is so special especially now like I have so many great friends and like real true friends and I would have never had if it wasn't for this business does that make sense like stuff like that 
share, share about how you love being a part of something bigger than yourself. That was my main thing. Like I loved being Lisa again. I wasn't just mom and babe for so long. It, I was just mom and I was babe and that was it. There was no Lisa anymore. Like, and that was one of the main reasons why I felt like I wanted to go back to the salon because I missed being a part of something bigger than myself. And not that I, I didn't want to leave my kids. So this was literally like a godsend. It was the best of both worlds because I could still be at home and I could still be mom and babe every second of every day, but I'm also Lisa and I'm also able to talk to people aside from like my husband and my two kids. And it's literally that, like, obviously the income's great, but the way that this company has like molded me to be the person that I am today, it's like I'm invested 100% and not just in the income as aspect of it, but like in the team aspect of it, if that makes sense. So people want to be a part of something. They love to be a part of something, especially if you're like a stay at home mom, because you literally change diapers and wash dishes all day. So once I started like, doing something for myself and not just for my husband and my kids like it changed who I was like I was kind of in this is like really sensitive but I was kind of like in a depression before I started this business and I remember my husband coming home and thinking that it was him and thinking that like it was our marriage that I wasn't happy with and it, that had nothing to do with it and I would try to explain to him like I don't know what it is but I just feel lost I feel like I'm not where I thought I would be like at 26 years old. Like I just don't feel like myself. And he would say like, well, is it me? Like, what do you, I don't like, he would say like, I don't do anything either. Like I don't go out with my friends. I don't do any of that. And I'm like, I know, but you have other people that you talk to at work. Like it's not just the kids and me all day. Like you get to go out and you get to be we. And I'm constantly mom and I'm constantly babe. Like I had no other life or no other like outlet that I can like pour that I could pour into and as soon as I started this business like everything changed like I was just a happier person I was a better mom I was a better wife I was a better friend because I was finally myself again if that makes sense and I know like if you're a stay-at-home mom you probably know exactly what I'm talking about and I can guarantee that you felt the exact same way that I used to feel at one point or another so just whatever it is about this business that you love, like share that. There's no reason why you feel like you have to be making thousands and thousands of dollars in order to attract outsiders to join you. That's, it doesn't have to be like that. Cause like there's so many people on here who are great at enrolling distributors and they're not ambassadors. I'm not an ambassador. Danielle is not an ambassador. We all start at this spot, So you have to, get to a point where you're, I don't want to say that you're comfortable being raw, but you, you're going to have to get to a point where you are comfortable sharing your story, sharing <laughs> that you've had in life, whether it's with your career or whether it's with whatever it may be. That's the stuff that's going to attract people. And that's the stuff that's going to draw people in. Those are going to be your runners. The ones that are reading your post and, and literally feeling like that's them. Like you're talking about them too, not just yourself. Those are the people that are going to join this business and those are going to be your runners, but you have to be transparent from time to time. It's not copying and pasting. Like you could get a $500 Ruby bonus is probably not going to get you as many potential distributors as sharing it. Why you want the Ruby bonus or what the Ruby bonus would do for your life and for your family. Those are the posts that you want to go for. Those are the posts that you want to dig deep, spend a little bit more time than just copying and pasting and posting those on Facebook. Those are the posts that are going to get you your runners. You just have to be relatable. Sorry, I'm like flinging this. I talk with my hands a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to bring up since, you know, you're talking about like the people that, you know, you, like how you have friends now, like, and if it wasn't for this business, you wouldn't. I feel like it, like who you, kind of off topic, but it's actually a totally different topic, but um, like who you surround yourself is also go like who you surround yourself with is also going to make a difference in your business. Oh, 1,000%, uh, literally 1,000%. Yeah. This was another topic that we kind of brought up yesterday and um, by no means do we 
when you sign up as a distributor, not signing a contract to only be all about it works. Like, to so only you're not, it works. yeah, you don't have, like, you're not saying, hey, you're t tunnel vision. It works, it works. Don't, don't have a life. You know, that's not what we're asking of you at all. Um, before I started, you know, I had my, my group of friends, and they're still my group of friends. Um, you know, I have friends that just don't want to be in the business, and I respect that 100%. I'm not, I'm not going to not be their friend because they're not interested in what I do. They respect what I do. You know, they tell me good for you. You're doing great, but not for me. And I respect that. They're still my friends. I hang out with them. But I also have my friends that are actual, like, Lisa, for example, Sammy. We're, like, really close, and we talk all the time. And I, me and Lisa can go from – sharing something extremely personal cracking up about something extremely personal to all of a sudden it's it works talk and we can go from like zero to a hundred real quick doing that and it's not a problem and i love that because we get it she gets what i do and if i'm stressed she gets why i'm stressed if i'm excited about a promotion she's excited for me and i'm tell if i'm telling her oh my god i'm helping one of my girls promote to ruby this month i'm super pumped she's pumped with me or she'll give me tips have her do this have her do that so um, I think that it, it's something that you should really take time out of your life to just really surround yourself around people that are in this business with you, whether it's your sideline, your upline, your downline, whether it's coffee, a team gathering, a meeting. Um, I feel like as leaders, we do hold zoom calls we do hold team gatherings at our house we do want to have lunch and dinner and you know for example me and lisa took time out of our our lives we money out of our own pocket to have a halloween party and a christmas party you know and we have like get togethers at our house and inviting you guys to our home or whatever the case may be and we have and we invite you guys and some people don't show and whatever, you know, things come up. You have a life too. You probably have plans that day. That's great. But I feel like there's a lot of people that are out there crying for help and they want this business so bad. They want it to work for them, but they don't ever show face ever to anything. And then they also wonder why their team's not showing face and why their team's not as involved in the business as they want them to be and why their team is the, the person that just enrolled is quitting next week or the business is not for them. It's because you need to lead your team by example. And if you expect your team to show up on the Zoom call with you, you better be on the Zoom call too kind of thing. I could not agree more. And honestly, that literally what Daniela just said, that's literally everything that I also want to say too. Like when you're, I can guarantee you, say you spend one week with one of your uh, people on your team. It doesn't even have to be like a personal enrolled distributor. It could be a sideline or whatever. If you spend one week hanging out with them, talking to them every single day versus an outsider, an out, an you know, a not at works person, especially a not at works person who's super negative in general. Like I know that probably all of you, everyone has a friend like this or multiple friends like this, where they literally can just suck the life out of every positive situation ever. Like I know I'm not the only one that has people like this in my life. Literally you can no. tell them positive and they will flip it into the worst situation or worst scenario in the world. Those are the people that I don't hang around anymore. I literally do not because it's toxic for myself and it's toxic for my business. I have people who I don't talk to anymore because literally everything out of their mouth was anti it works. If I'm trying to grow my business, not just for myself, but for my family, there is no reason why I would hang out with someone like that who will jeopardize what I'm trying to do for my family. It's just not smart. And I can get either respect it or just yeah, like just, if they don't respect it that and all they do is bash it I just feel like they're not going to support you in anything you do you can tell them that you're going to go to school to be a lawyer and they're going to tell you you're dumb like that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard you know what I mean yeah like they're going to have something negative to say always and those are the people that you have to be really 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 careful about because they can derail you like that without you even realizing it so you you just surround yourself by the people that you that make you feel good and that push you to be better no one said that just because you join this business you can't have outside friends but at the end of the day 
in order to be successful, you want to hang out with people that are going after the same stuff that you are, or that want the same things that you want. Those are the people that you want to be around. Just like Daniela said, I feel like when Daniela joined, like the reason why we did so well is because I was all it works. And then by default, when she joined, she was all it works. So we literally fed off of each other all the time. We still do. Like, I feel like that's what continuously lights our fire together is because we're both doing the same thing. We both go through the same stuff. We both have the same struggles. We have the same roadblocks. We have the same bumps in the road that everyone else goes through when it comes to working this business. The fact that we have each other to kind of talk to and like go back and forth when it comes to hard times or when it comes to being in a funk, that's the type of people that you want to be around. That's the type of people that you want to attach yourself to. So that by default, you're the same exact way, if that makes sense. Um, Yvette said right now, she said, so I know a lot of girls that want to join this, but want to join, but they are the most negative people that I've met and start drama. So I'm really not sure how to go about that because I'm not tolerant of any of that. I can agree with that 100%. I know me and Daniela have talked about, um, like people that I've known, people that she's known, like potential distributors, but they also are the same exact way like that. So it kind of, I mean, not saying you don't want to sign them, but I had a conversation with someone on my team the other day and it was kind of about that. And it was, a, it was just about, she posts a lot of negative stuff and shares a lot of negative stuff. And I'm like, if you continue to do that, you're going to pretty much ruin your business without even really knowing it. No one wants to be surrounded by that negativity. So if they do join, I would just have that conversation with them and be real with them and say, let's look at your Facebook. We got a clean house. This post needs to go. This post needs to go. This post needs to go. If it's not making people feel happy, making people laugh or keeping people interested, it does not need to be on your Facebook at all. I love memes. I love quotes, all that stuff, but you'll never see me post something that's raunchy or that's um super like explicit explicit content type stuff like you won't see me post it i might laugh about it i might send Danielle a screenshot of it and I'll laugh like tag you in it <laughs> yeah but you won't see that on my facebook because tear people from my page that's going to deter people from me something that I might think is funny someone else could find very offensive and I never want to step on anyone's toes especially because of all customers if that makes sense so I would just have a conversation with them and if they are super negative and if they like drama I would just be real with them and be like you know what this is maybe this is something you need to be able to get out of that mind frame to get out of that mentality where they need drama or whatever it might be. Maybe this is like a good outlet that they could use to help, you know, change them and put them on a different path. And they could potentially be really good at it if they just stop with that stuff, if that makes sense. Like no more drama, no more BS, especially when it comes to Facebook, because when you join your Facebook pretty much is an extension of your business, whether you like it or not, especially if social media is how you're choosing to grow your business. You have to keep it clean have to have to and I'm not saying you can't say like shit or whatever it may be but when it comes to like really really graphic stuff like you I would not post that on Facebook because I can guarantee you it's going to tear people from you and just as a businesswoman alone you have to think of what success looks like like what does it look like it doesn't have to be any shape or form but I can guarantee you it's not someone who's on Facebook cussing up a storm or cussing at this person and calling this person this name and that and this and the other so you just want to be presentable and I always if you have to second guess it and you have to think like okay should I post this on Facebook if you're already thinking that don't post it on Facebook chances are it's probably something that's better left not on your news feed uh, what else? I wanted to touch on what Daniela said a little bit. So I know that it's easy to get distracted and it's easy to feel defeated and discouraged. I hear it all the time. Sometimes I feel like that. Me and Daniela talk about it often. But if you are messaging your sponsor that you're defeated and you're discouraged, but yet you're not showing up to meetings, you're not on Zoom calls, you're not active on the It Works Lifers page. You haven't posted for three weeks. Yeah, you haven't posted. You're not working your business, but yet you're discouraged. Like, 
pardon my French, but what the hell are you bitching about? Because at the end of the day, that's why you feel discouraged because you're not staying connected. If I'm constantly hosting meetings and you're not coming to them, there's no wonder why you feel discouraged. That's get to them. There's no excuse. Bring your kids. I've had kids in my house. I have two kids of my own. Like I know that sitters aren't always available. Bring them. No one's going to fire you. I'm not going to fire you. You're, are you going to fire yourself? Like there's no excuse. I don't think. And I'm not saying that you have to be at every single thing because everybody has lives. But if you are ever feeling like you're discouraged and you're ever like seeing yourself talk to your sponsor or talk to anyone and talking about that, about feeling discouraged, but yet you're not doing anything about it, like staying plugged in, getting on Zoom calls, watching your training academy, watching the previous Zoom calls that you weren't able to jump on, like, I don't know what else to say. We can only do so much. Your there's just do so much. There's just so many ways to stay connected. I feel like not just us, there's YouTube, there's eSuite, there's uh, other leaders that do live videos, live trainings. There's, um, and by, what I mean by YouTube is you can look up, it works training, it works Ruby, it works how promotions, how to do this, how to do that. There's everything. There's a Sunday night call from corporate and a Monday night call from corporate. And then we have a Zoom on Tuesdays. And then we, I'm available for one-on-ones. I mean, if, if you are on Lisa's downline, again, you don't, it doesn't have to be with someone that's on your team or someone that's that enrolled you. Like I, you don't have to, that's just not, I, I'm like really good friends with a distributor that was enrolled by another girl that was enrolled by one of my other distributors. And it's just like, she's like way in my downline. I've never met her. And now she's like one of my closest friends. So you, as long as you're staying connected, like you just, there's just so many ways to be involved and keep yourself like, you know, pumped up without, I, and I just feel like a lot of people don't utilize that, the, the tools that are right in our hands. Yeah. But sure. at the same time, they're like, oh my God, my business is not booming. And oh my God, like, um, Oh, you, you never have team get togethers or like, I, I, you don't know, like you can't even imagine all the stuff that I hear from distributors that about how they want to be a certain rank so bad, but their efforts do not match what they want to be at all. There's literally no easy way to the top. I wish no way. there was, but there is no easy way to the top. You will have to work more. You will have to be committed more. You will have to give more of yourself for your team with every and single sacrifices. Person. What? You have to make some sacrifices if you want to get to where you want to be, lay the groundwork and party later. It's short-term sacrifice for long-term success. That's pretty much all it comes down to. There are, they were, there were so many nights where I would rather be at home, especially on Luisa's days off. Like there were so many nights where I would rather be home, but instead I was meeting with the potential or I was meeting with the distributor who was discouraged or I was have, uh, helping host a launch party. Like there were so many different times that I would have rather been home, but I was working. And there were so many times where Luis was like, I'm off. Why are you leaving? And it's like, because I have to, if you want to continue to keep living the life that we're living, like it's short-term sacrifices for long-term success. And it's either you're willing to make those sacrifices and do what it takes to get to where you're at or you're not. And if you're not willing to grow and you're not willing to get better, then you better get comfortable with being exactly where you're at because nothing is going to change. So if you're not comfortable with growing, if you're not comfortable with switching it up, if you're not comfortable with doing the things that you have to do to get to where you want to be, then you better get comfortable with being exactly where you're at because I don't see anything changing if you don't change, you know what I mean? We have to constantly evolve. We have to constantly evolve as leaders. We have to constantly evolve as distributors for ourselves and for our own business. I love getting Lexi. together with people. What? You scared me. Who did? Lexi Bud, because she has her face mask on. Oh. <laughs> I Sorry, love... so like I'm like going through my phone and I'm looking at everybody who's on a little crap. <laughs> It's a good time to put a facial on. 
I feel, um, I wanted to say Lisa, because how, like you were just saying how, um, like when you go meet with whatever it is you're doing, whether it's with a distributor or a meeting or whatever it is, and, but you know, I'm pretty sure you wanted to stay at home on your day off with Luis. I feel like a lot of people don't think that, I feel like people think that we just have all this time and we don't have nothing to do and we want to do all this stuff when really we're human too. And just how, let's just say, for example, we did have a team uh, meeting, which we will be having like one after um, one team, one mission. We want to have one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So say that you RSVP to come to this meeting and then you change your mind to, and you don't want to come to this meeting because you have, you'd rather be at home doing whatever it is that you're doing and you don't want to get dressed. Believe me, we probably were woke up real lazy that day wanting, wanting to do the exact same thing, but you know, we're making a sacrifice to invest into our business because we want to continue and to be where we're currently at and even promote later. So it does take some sacrifices and our time that we put into our team is not, I feel like it, sometimes like it shouldn't go unnoticed. Like we really put ourselves out there for you guys to really use us, ask us questions. We want to help you do a one-on-one -on -one if you need to, if you can't make it to a team meeting, if you have your kids and you didn't want to bring your kids. I mean, we're always down for some coffee. We're down for some Chipotle, whatever it is that you want to do. You just have to take that step too. You know, like you have to meet us halfway. Um, and speaking of that um where is that note we what is it that we wanted to talk about um i want to talk about one thing really really quick before i forget, yeah, go ahead. I forget my, go ahead. my i can't remember what i was about to say okay i wanted to talk a little bit about um i guess just taking ownership and taking responsibility of your business so yes That's what i was gonna say <laughs> oh, girl go yeah. ahead um so yes we are here to help you 100 percent. literally i respond to people at two o'clock in the morning like we are always here to help always but you have to remember that even if we wanted to we cannot run your business for you i just we can't because you have to also remember I'm running my own business and I'm, I have my own business to work as well. So even though like when new people start, I'll give them a few posts to help them like get comfortable with posting or to help them, you know, kind of see like what it is that you should be posting or what it is that you should be looking for when you're doing a post. I love to do that and I will do that, but I cannot do that every single minute of every single day. Can you imagine if I had to make a post for every single person on my downline? my Facebook would be non-existent. There would not be a single business post for myself if I was busy making posts for everyone else, if that makes sense. So yes, I want to help every person. I know Daniela does, I know Sammy does, but we also have to work our own business. If we were only helping everyone else and not taking the time to work our own business, we probably wouldn't be where we're at either, you know? And your your success is based 100% on you. So yes, meetings are amazing. Yes, Zooms are amazing. But at the end of the day, if you don't utilize anything from that, it's not going to grow your business at all. At all. Nothing's going to change because you have to implement the stuff that you're learning, the stuff that you're learning on YouTube, the stuff that you're learning in your books that you're reading, whatever it may be, you have to implement that. We can share you share with you all of the tips that we think really work, all of the stuff that works for us. But if you're not implementing that in your own life, it's not going to help you at all. You can go to a million meetings and if you don't take away anything from that and use it in your real life, it's not going to matter. Those meetings would have been a complete waste of time, if that makes sense. I couldn't agree more. That's everything that was on my notes. <laughs> Um, hold on. um we were gonna talk about auto ship um so i wanted to just bring that up real quick just because as everyone knows we have an auto ship of adbv that we should be running each month um and yes the 150 pbv is an amazing option but if you don't plan to run your auto shipment and plan to go with the 150 pbv you you have to make sure that it's well above 150. 
So I had um, one of my sidelines, she's not even on our team, she's a friend of mine, and she promoted um, to Emerald, and she earned the Emerald bonus. So she went from, from executive to Emerald, and when she went from executive to Emerald, she wasn't running her auto ship that month because she didn't have the money to, but she worked her business like you would never believe to get that bonus, and she earned it. Her volume was at like 100, I believe it was like 160 or something like that, like close to that. Well, someone canceled their order of hair, skin, nails, and it dropped her below the 150. She didn't get that bonus. She didn't earn a paycheck. So that was all pointless. Everything that she, all that hard work that she did, she didn't even get paid out on it. And that sucks. So I don't, I don't know that people understand that part of the 150 PBV and me personally, I, that only became available. Like I believe it was last year. So all I know is auto ship. It's not an option before. I think it was like 350 PBV, wasn't it? No, it was 400. Was it? Uh -huh. Well, I, yeah, no, I was placing every loyal. No one had time to have 400 PBV at that time. So I was running an auto ship. That's all I've ever known. And that was also something that pushed me every single month. When I first joined, I had just stopped working. I had no job. Quit, like out of nowhere. I was like, I just quit my job, Lisa. She's I'm like, joining. What? I was yeah, like, I quit. oh, okay. So I literally quit and then um, jobless. And then I um, took money from my savings for money that was for me to live my life every day, I took from that. Imagine, like, I had all these bills to pay. I had no job. I had a savings account, and that's where, like, I was living from. I invested those $99, and when Lisa told me about the ADPVV, and I don't even think, because she was, she was also new. She was in for, like, three months, but she didn't know. I don't feel like you knew like everything. So, I literally you know, didn't work my business for three months. So pretty yeah, much, so, Bella joined, that's when I like joined. Started working. Yeah. So she didn't, I don't even know if she even talked to me about ADP PBV. It was like the blind lead in the blind. I was like, Hey, I have an ADP or I have to run an auto ship of 80. She's like, Oh yeah. Something like that. I think you have to run that to get paid. I, don't remember. I was like, Oh, okay. Look, I don't have money for that. So I knew that if I wanted to get paid, which I wanted to get paid, I had to run that auto ship, but I didn't afford to run that auto ship. So whatever I was ordering, I had to sell within that week. Auto ship should never come out of your pocket. If you are paying out of pocket or if you're in debt or if you're putting more money into the business, quote unquote, than you are making, it's because you aren't working your business. And that's just me being straight up. You're not working your business. If For you sure. are if you are paying more money to it works than it works is paying you, you aren't working. And that's, that's just like black and white, plain and simple how it is. So you need to figure out what you're doing or not doing and fix it. I literally couldn't agree more when, like Daniela said, when I first joined, there was no 150 PBV that did not exist. It was, you ran an 80 BV auto ship and that's it. Auto ship was law. I still take it very seriously. I run an auto ship today. I run an auto ship for myself and I run an auto ship for my husband. My husband's PBV is way over 150. There's no reason that I have to run his auto ship, but I do. I take my business very seriously. I take building his business very seriously. So when I first joined, I didn't have the, I barely had the $99. I didn't even have the $99 I took for my grocery money. That was not even money that I should have been spending. I did not have the money to join. I literally did not have the money to join. And when I joined, I was terrified that I was not going to make that money back. I was also terrified that I had an ADBB auto ship coming out in exactly a month. So in the beginning, if it honestly, and I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys right now. If it wasn't for that auto ship, I probably would not be where I'm at today for the simple fact that in the beginning, what literally built this business was me selling those wraps. Not because I wanted to, but because I literally had to. My paycheck and my, ch my children's way of life, way of living, way of eating, way of keeping the electricity on was I had to sell those wraps. I had to because there was no way that another hundred dollars could be taken out of our account and us be okay. It did, it wouldn't have happened. There was no way. So that took me 
pushing myself that much more, reaching out to that many, that many more people on Facebook, blitzing that many more people because I had to sell these wraps. I had to, there was no way around it. So it pushed me harder. It pushed me to message more people. It pushed me to ask more people to host wrap parties for me. It literally pushed me because our livelihood was depending on it. There was no way that I could have that auto ship come out unless I sold those wraps. I had to at least sell five. And I knew that every single month I have to sell five of these wraps in order to deposit this money back into my account. So that $80 auto ship doesn't cause us to go negative. I had to, there was no way around it. So if I had one more wrap left and I knew that that auto ship was going to run in a couple of days, my ass went to target my ass message people on Facebook. I did anything and everything that I had to, to sell those wraps. I had to, there was no way around it. It literally pushed me that much harder to work my business. And this is where kind of like what Daniela said about the 150 PBV. If you don't have anything holding you accountable, if you don't have anything hanging over your head, what's going to push you? What's going to push you to message those people on Facebook? What's going to push you to push that much harder? What's going to push you to blitz one more person, two more people? What is it? What's, what's it going to be? What's going to be your driving force? I didn't have any other option. Neither did, did Daniela. So we literally had to do what it took to sell those wraps. I had to, I didn't have any other option. So auto ship 100%. Honestly, so for any giveaways that I do, I think Daniela does this too. In order to even be entered in the giveaway, I check to make sure you're running an auto ship. If you're not running an auto ship, but you won the giveaway, I will message you and tell you this giveaway is only for people who run an ADBV auto ship or more. If I'm investing in you and I'm buying you gear or product or whatever it may be, you have to take me and you have to take this business just as seriously. And to me, that's running an ADBV auto ship. That's what it is. So giveaways, anytime I do a giveaway, one of the qualifications is you have to be running an auto ship. I would never ask one of you guys to invest $50, $100, whatever your giveaway may be in one of your downline members who's not running an auto ship. I would tell you not to do it and to let them know that they have to be running an auto ship in order to qualify for that giveaway. And at the end of the day, when it comes down to place, say I get two distributors and I'm looking where to place it, I will never, ever, ever place a distributor underneath a distributor who hasn't run an auto ship, hasn't run an auto ship in two months, hasn't run an auto ship ever. I won't do it. It's not going to happen. I'm going to give it to someone else who takes this business seriously enough to invest the $88 or the $80 and make sure that they're working their business to sell those wraps. You don't have to get two boxes of wraps. I got two boxes of wraps in the beginning because that was the easiest thing for me to sell. And that's what made my money back. Now I get like a box of wraps. I'll get a bottle of hair, skin, nails, whatever it may be. But now, even if, even if I order products solely for me, my commission check more than covers that. So I'm not coming out of pocket. You want to make sure that you're not coming out of pocket on your auto ship. And it's your driving force. You can, there's no way that you could own a Starbucks and not have coffee stocked up. What the hell are you going to sell? Water, ice water? Like, no, not to mention that's free. So you're not going to make any money at all. You wrap you you have a wrap business. You have to have wraps. You don't have to have thousands of dollars worth of wraps, not even hundreds of dollars worth of wraps. As long as you have one to two boxes, you're good, but you need to make sure that you're intentionally trying to sell those. The more people you wrap, the more potential loyal customers you're going to have, the more potential distributors you're going to have. That's just how it works. Wrap people, set up wrap parties. That's how we build this business. Were you going to say something, Daniela? No, I think I'm good. I thought I heard someone whispering, but it could be just me. Oh, sorry. I was thinking. I'm, I don't. I didn't know that I was coming out out loud, though. <laughs> um, do you guys have any questions? Now's the time to ask if you guys do have any questions. How about any comments, tips? to hear from anybody if you have a comment or a tip anything that works for you yeah any like leaders concerns no. i have something about auto ships share away. yeah i don't know if i missed it i don't think i did um i always tell my team like you said like you can't have a coffee shop without coffee nobody's gonna buy these products unless you show them that you're using them so that's exactly why you need to run your auto shipment put a wrap on and i guarantee you if you post your wrap results, 
you're going to get a lot more people interested in becoming a loyal customer for those. Um, rather than like if you were just to post a bunch of strangers bellies, like they need to see mm -hmm. it working for you. Like right now they need to see Lexi with that facial on and they need to see you holding up a bottle of fat fighters or whatever, but you can't sell products that you don't even know if they work because you've never used them. That's why your auto shipment is so important too. For sure. You want to be a product of the product. Yes. I guess, Being a yes, product yes. of the product is, is huge, but don't let that hold you back. Yeah, for sure. Like I didn't try any of our skincare line for the longest time, but mm -hmm. I can tell you once I did try it, I sold it. I didn't try a product. I didn't even know what our products were before I joined. <laughs> I didn't try a product until after I went Ruby. Lisa was like, can I get this damn wrap on you? I think she might even gave me one of her own wraps I so I can just try it. I was like, so are you going to wrap? And she was like, no, because I want $25. But <laughs> honestly, you don't have to try every single product to believe that they work because I, yeah. I saw so many testimonials from my friends, from my distributors, from sideline distributors that I knew these products worked. So I didn't have a problem sharing other people's results because I knew they worked. But honestly, just like Sammy said, once you start sharing your own results yeah. and your own before and afters of the cleanse, of the wraps, of lip and eye, of whatever it may be, that's what kind of opens the floodgates to where people start to, those skeptics start to take you a little bit more seriously because you're not just sharing Sammy's post or Danielle's oh, before yeah. and after or Lisa's before and after. You're sharing your before and after. So there's I've, no way that people can, you know. I've gotten so many loyals from like my, for hair skin nails since I started posting that I was taking, I don't have a before and after of hair skin nails, but I take pictures of my hair. And, um, or like with the cleanse, so many people have messaged me. They're like, Oh my God. So it really does work. Like I've been wanting to try it. I just didn't know if it worked. And it's crazy because like, I've never not promoted hair skin nails. I always promoted it And this girl messaged me and she's like, I always wanted to try it. I just wasn't sure it worked. And I'm like, dude, you've been my friend for all this time and you're just signing up. But it took her seeing my results of hair skin nails for her to be like, okay, I know what you look like with a tapered haircut. I want my hair like yours now. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I, some, it does, it start, does make a difference. Yeah. Once people start not saying that people won't buy because they buy all the time. I mean, I've never tried Estro Rhythm, but I have a few loyal customers that have purchased it. So not saying that you can't sell products. Everything has to do with, your passion and your belief and whether you are truly radiating that you believe in something or not. That's what's going to sell is your excitement, your passion, the way that you present it, the way that you present the products, the way that you present the opportunity. So I think that's so true, but you don't have to try every single product in order to be able to sell every single product. Let's see. We don't have any questions. No one else has any questions or any comments. Let's see. No, nada, nothing. Okay, then we'll go ahead and end it here. If you guys have any questions, um, you know that we're always available. Oh, Wait, I have a little there. question. Jess. Who is who is it? Me, what? Jess. Oh, what's up? Um, well, is anybody doing like a barbecue or something for It Works Week or Green Carpet? Do you know? Ooh, I'm not oh, sure. Yeah. That would be smart, but I'm not going to be here. Yeah. Wait, no. I um, I won't, I, I wish that I could have the pay-per-view option, but I don't even have like. You don't even have to <laughs> Oh, I don't watch enough TV, but <laughs> if somebody wants to have it, I'd be more than happy to help them host it. I I'm have down. a million dogs here, so we can't have it here, but wherever, whoever wants to do it, just let me know, too. Is it, okay. it's this weekend, right? Yeah. Dang. That sucks that you're leaving, Lisa. I know. My brother gets deployed on Saturday, so that's a bummer. Oh, um, yeah. We can just ask the lifers page. Mm -hmm. I know, um, I know Gabby wanted to have something. I also know Melissa wanted to have something. I don't know, like, if they set anything up yet, but... Yeah. Let me know if anyone does and then we can for sure put something together. And okay. what is 
who what's pay-per-view what like what is that on dish or direct tv or i think it's on all tv <laughs> oh i see i don't, I don't know. know really watch the, the box <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Is everyone too young for the box? Does nobody know what the box is? So anyone can get pay per view. Is what you're saying, Jess? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I don't even. Because we have Dish no. Network and we have pay per view, but my dad has Direct TV and he has pay per view. Oh, okay, got it. So it's probably like just the, anyone who has cable type of thing. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, if anyone wants to get that, I think that that would be huge i'm probably bring it up in the lifers page yeah i'll make a little post and then we can go from there from there yeah um it's crazy because this is literally the first corporate event that i haven't been to since i joined i've been to like all of the green carpets i've been to conference for the past three years like it's crazy and it by the way look out for conference because sometimes they don't they normally announce it now right mm -hmm. okay that's another thing if you're going to conference, start saving money right this second. Start slanging those wraps. Do whatever the hell you have to do because conference tickets are going to sell out. There's no if, ands, or buts. So as soon as that is launched, buy your ticket. And Last year they had like a, and I, we're only saying this because it's Green Carpet Week and they're going to probably announce, they're not going to release the tickets, but they're probably going to announce it. Yeah, so you don't have last year, enough time to save up. Yeah, last year they did like a payment plan, so you can always do the payment plan if they offer it. But you guys, it was like the it was my first one. I told myself that I would only go to a conference if I was a double, and I went my first time this year. And you have to go. You have to go. Literally, you have to go. You can talk to anyone that has been to conference. Me and Sammy were crying. Like me and Monique were crying. Like you have to go i promise you i promise you that you will never look at your business the same once you go to conference it is literally it sounds so corny and i would always wonder why people say like you have to go to conference it'll change your business i was like okay whatever but honestly it will it it's so it really does insane it truly truly does and you don't want to miss this like you can ask any of us that went last year we had so much fun like so much fun not just like on a business level but on like a friendship level as well like oh my gosh like especially because it was like 10 of us in a room <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was oh my gosh it was so much fun you guys have to go you have to have to have to go i went to my first conference as a brand new emerald i literally promoted right before conference and it was um in 2000 and 13 no 2014 right hold on you guys this is the last month 12 for the for the cruise so right oh yeah that's true too so make sure that you're doing whatever you got to do to get those um cruise points because this is the last month if you um if you or anyone that's personally enrolled goes ruby is 2500 no it's 5000 now Oh, it's 5,000 and that's what you need to get on to even qualify. Yeah, that's a half cabin just for going Ruby. Um, so I wanted to share this really quick. This is my first lanyard. It's backwards, but this is my first lanyard from the first conference that I went to. I was a brand new Emerald, like a brand new Emerald. And they own, they took away the diamond bonus. I didn't get the diamond bonus. Daniela didn't get the diamond bonus the first time. That's another thing too. If you ever, if I ever hear you say that you're going to quit just because you don't get a bonus i'm going to choke you because that is the stupidest thing that you could ever say oh. business post sorry my camera's going off don't ever limit yourself like that just because i there's been people who say if i don't get the ruby bonus i'm gonna quit it's like screw the damn ruby bonus go after the diamond bonus what why or go ruby even if you don't get the $500 Ruby bonus, the average is $400 to $500 a month in commission. I would rather take a $500 check every single month than a one-time $500 payout. I'm just saying. So I went to conference with a brand new Emerald. I didn't get the diamond bonus. I missed out on it two times. Daniela missed out on it. It sucked, but 
I didn't care. I wanted so much more than a, than a bonus. I was in this for so much more than a bonus. I went to conferences in Emerald. They announced the diamond bonus and then they announced the double diamond bonus, which was a brand new bonus that they had never, ever done before. They, they never did anything other than a diamond bonus. Then they announced a triple bonus, a presidential bonus and an ambassador bonus. I remember sitting there and my husband went with me cause I didn't have a big team. So Daniela couldn't go cause she literally joined like two months before that. Um, so I went with my husband and I remember when they announced the diamond bonus and the double diamond bonus. And I was like, I think I can do it. Like I'm almost positive. I can get that diamond bonus, but I might, might be able to get that double diamond bonus. And he's like, you can do it. You can do it. And I was like, no, like I really think that I might be able to do it. And I did it. I went diamond the next month. And then 27 days later, I went double diamond and it was literally the hardest I've ever worked in my whole entire life, but it was so worth it because I earned that diamond bonus. And then I earned that double diamond bonus and it was right after conference. So the amount of energy that you get from conference, it literally just, it sounds so corny, but it literally changes you. It changes the way that you fight for your business. It changes the way that you look at your business. It changes the way that you work your business. Like it's, it's crazy and you don't want to miss it. You do not want to miss conference. Because after the next the next conference, I was a double diamond. And then this past conference, I was a triple diamond. So I'm hoping next conference, I'll have a nice one of these bad boys that says presidential. But even if I don't, you won't see me ever say that I'm gonna quit just because I don't get that promotion. I will keep fighting until I'm an ambassador diamond and you should too. If you miss a Ruby bonus, who gives a shit? If you miss getting on the cruise, who gives a shit? Fight for it next time. There's no reason why you should ever put a limitation on yourself or ever put a time frame on yourself. You should be in this for the long haul, 100%. You should be in this so 10 years from now, you are an ambassador diamond. Whether you miss the ruby bonus, whether you miss the diamond bonus like I did, whether you miss the diamond bonus again like I did and like Daniela did. I work my when I worked at AT&T I worked so hard each year to get a 50 cent rate so a 50 cent raise yeah so like that's what I'm saying like if you can work so hard at your current job for a 50 cent raise or a dollar raise don't let missing a cruise stop you from working your business like trust me it'll it'll be better than that for sure it'll so be much way better. better than that so, so much better than that. Get yourself to a point where if you want to go on a cruise with your family, you can do it and you can pay for it yourself. You don't need anyone else to give you a free cruise. Work for that. Yes, the cruise is amazing and we had so much fun, but work, work to get to the point where you can get yourself your own cruise. You can give yourself, your husband a cruise for Christmas if you want to. Be in this for the long haul. Don't be in this for the short-term success because I promise you that you can truly have a completely different life than a life that you've ever imagined, but you have to be willing to fight for it. And you cannot give up on yourself. You should never ever work harder for someone else than you're willing to work for yourself. This is your business. This is your future. This is your kid's future. This could be their college money, whatever it is, whatever it is that's pushing you to, to make this happen. Don't quit on yourself. Don't ever like set a limitation. There's no reason why you have to be this rank by a certain amount of time. Yes, it's amazing to have a goal, but just because you don't hit it, why in the world would you quit? Why would you ever throw away the potential to earn $10,000 a month based off of not earning $500 in one month, if that makes sense? Don't sell yourself short because I can promise you that there's no reason why you can't hit every single goal. You just have to be willing to work for it and you have to be willing to fight for it, especially when you hit those bumps in the road because you're going to hit them. We all hit them. And you're going to continue to hit them even when you're a diamond, even when you're a double, even when you're a triple and a presidential and an ambassador. I can guarantee you. But you have to be willing to fight for it. Do you want it more than you're willing to work for your nine to five? That's all it comes down to. So if you guys don't have any other questions, which I don't think you guys do or any other comments, then we will see you guys next Tuesday. Thank you guys for getting on the call. Bye guys. Message Bye. questions. Bye.